All right, welcome. Let's play some Splendor. So Splendor is a great uh, two to four player game. Uh, basically what you're doing is you're trying to purchase gems in order to win, win victory points along the way. Uh, what I have in front of us here is just the basic layout. Uh, the only difference is depending on the number of players, you will have a different number of gems available in each pile, plus the diff uh, different number of lords will be placed out of the top. So effectively what you're going to do at the beginning of the game is just lay out four uh, cars from each uh, level. So you've got level one, level two, level three, indicated by the circles at the bottom of the card there. So I'll go ahead and just lay out four cards of each. And what you'll notice as I'm laying these out is that some cards will have a number in the top, some cards will not. Uh, each card has a different colored gem in the top right hand corner and a different uh, circle, different colored circles in the bottom left. So the bottom left indicates the cost of each card. So in order to purchase this card down here, you would require one blue gem and two, you may not be able to read that, but two uh, uh, diamond gems or, or white gems. This one here would cost uh, four black gems in order for you to purchase this card. The number in the top left indicates the number of victory points associated to that card. Effectively, the person who manages to generate 15 victory points is the winner of the game. To assist with getting those victory points, we also have, uh, in the case of a three-player game, these Lord cards at the top. So what that indicates is, I'll bring one up so you can see it. In order for this Lord to come to your party, if you like, uh, you are required to have four white cards in front of you, as well as four blue cards. And we'll get to that later on. Uh, as a result of meeting that criteria, you would earn an additional three victory points. Okay, so this is basically the layout of the game. And effectively on your turn, you have three options. Uh, the three options include uh, picking up three different colored gems and putting it into your pile. So for example, you may pick up these three and then they would just go down in front of you. The other option is if in a uh, three player game, if there are at least four uh, gems or chips in one pile, you may purchase two of the same color. So that would be a second turn. The third option is to buy one of the uh, the cards in front of you. So say for example, I had four black gems in front of me, I could then use those four black gems to then purchase this card and then that would just go in front of me and then we would flip over a new card to replace that area. Those four chips would then be placed back into the bank for them future use by somebody else. So now that I have this green gem in front of me, what that basically does is enables me to always have a green gem available for me to purchase additional cards down the track. So say for example, if I wanted to buy this card here, I would just need one more green gem two red and two black. I don't actually give up this card that that is consistently stayed in my pool of uh, gems to use. And over time, you're gonna purchase cards and put them into your your, your pool, uh, requiring less of, of the actual uh, gems from the market. Uh, you'll notice as you gradually go up through the stages, you'll notice that the actual number of victory points that are available on the cards significantly increase, but obviously the cost in order to purchase those cards are increased in line with that as well. So the first person to get in this case four green cards and four red cards in front of them, this Lord would then come to the to this player and that would add to the total victory points allocated to this this player. The last option on your turn is that you can actually reserve cards. So what reserving does is, say for example, you have your eye on a specific card uh, and uh, potentially a strategy that you're looking at, you could reserve that card and purchase it at a later turn. So for example, I am looking at this card here and I'm starting to build the necessary uh, gems and or the, yeah, the necessary gems in order to purchase that card, but I can't quite get it yet. But I may think that maybe player two or player three are also looking to buy that card. I would then pick up that card, reserve it, and in turn, I also get a gold wild card with that. Uh, beg your pardon, gold chip uh, that I can use uh, as any color to purchase any other card then. 
You can have up to three reserved cards in your hand at once, and when you're able to buy it on your turn, you would just effectively uh, use the the chips or the cards and then place it down in front of you, and then it just acts as in another turn where you've purchased that card. That is effectively the game. There isn't really much to it. Uh, it's just a matter of working your way through the levels, purchasing different cards to amass your gem collection in front of you, invite the lords to your so-called party, and uh, earn 15 victory points, and the first person to get those points is the winner of the game. That was just a rundown there on how to play Splendor. I love this game. I, uh, I bought it a few years ago at Fan Expo, and uh, it's definitely one of the popular games amongst my group. Uh, it is a good filler game uh, in between perhaps you know, longer games. Uh, the, the component quality is phenomenal, like just the ability to be able to pick and play up with these, these very solid chips are uh, a lot of fun just throughout the game as you're kind of contemplating and deciding how you really want to play out the game. Uh, the art is phenomenal. Uh, even these, you know, these uh, these Lord cards, they're they're just great. You know, I, I get the sense that they're probably, uh, you know, we we see some familiar faces throughout the game as well, which is quite it's a nice touch. Um, so let's talk about strategy and how we can win those fifteen victory points to to get to the end of the game. Uh, so I've got a couple of notes here. In my experience, the, it's the the most difficult part, I guess, is to try and avoid picking up the the lower level, uh, you know, level one cards. Although they are cheap, and you know, some may grant you that ex that that victory point. If you spend too much time down there, you're really going to delay your game in actually getting to the second and third layer. Ultimately, I guess what you really want to do is take a look at the Lords at the top and identify what requirement, what card requirements they are looking for. Because uh, they're really going to give you a great boost at the end of the game. I think there are some cards that... No, I was wrong. They all, they all give three victory points. It just d depends on the makeup of the cards. So some, some Lords only require two colours, others require three. So I, I think the best approach in my experience is... Uh, when you start playing the game a couple of turns in, identify you know which which lord or lords you can have multiple lords actually come to your team. Uh, whoever basically meets the criteria first gets that lord. Uh, so identify which lords you're aiming for, and then reserve cards. Like so you can have up to three reserve cards in your hand at once. The great thing about reserved cards is every time you do reserve a card, you get a gold wild card, which that is the only time you can get these these uh, these gems, is by reserving cards. Hang on to those reserve cards and then work towards buying those cards and reaching that ultimate goal of 15 points. Uh, I would expect you that your reserved cards would primarily come from the third tier, potentially the second tier, but ultimately the third in order to then achieve those, those Lord uh, cards as well. You'll also notice as you play through the game that some cards are cheaper for more victory points. So say for example this one costs eight, uh, you probably can't see it there, this one costs eight uh, gems however it only gives you two victory points whereas the one next to it, even this one here, only costs seven gems and gives you the same amount of victory points and the one in between only six gems although it is of the same color maybe a little bit more difficult to achieve does give that extra victory point as well so a lot of replayability a lot of uh, dynamics i find this is a very quiet game people tend to be very focused and concentrated on the actual game the only time anyone typically speaks is one of those you know disgruntled oh, I, was, I was trying to get that card or yeah, God damn it. <laughs> um, but that's where the, red, the, the the ability to reserve those those cards that you really have an eye on uh, early on to avoid anyone kind of picking up those cards as well. So I would highly recommend this game. Uh, plays two to four, typically uh, yeah, about a 30 minute game is how long it takes. Um, yeah, try it out. Let me know what you think. 
And if you have any other strategy ideas or different ways or different approaches on how to play the game, please, you know, may, may add a comment in the in the comments below and let's start up a discussion and find maybe more improved and better ways to win those victory points. All right, I'll talk to you soon. Have a great day. Bye.